Hi and welcome to this work in progress demonstration of the MassProduce plugin. My name is Joel Palmius and I am the community manager for MakeHuman. Sooner or later, most practitioners of 3D graphics will run into the problem with having groups or even crowds of 3D people in their scenes. Designing the individual characters in such groups one by one is tedious and time consuming. It is also in many cases pretty unthankful work since most of the details will be lost on the end recipient, as the details will drown in the larger scene. It would thus be desirable to automate as much as possible of the work. Enter the MassProduce plugin. The aim of this plugin is to rapidly generate large sets of characters. Contrary to the previously existing random plugin, the MassProduce plugin is highly configurable, and it is possible to limit and steer the randomization according to different rules. We will demonstrate this in a moment. Further, the new plugin supports varying body parts such as hair as well as clothes. At the point of making this video, the plugin has not yet been included in any MakeHuman release. The plan is that it will be included in the 120 Alpha 3, which is slated for release during the coming weeks. After the demonstration of the features, we will take a quick look at how to install it, if you are impatient and want to test it before Alpha 3 is released. But let's take a look at what we are talking about. Once installed, you can find the MassProduce plugin on the Community tab. At first glance, it might look pretty intimidating with lots of settings. It is not as complicated as it looks, but we will get back to that. For now, we will just accept all the defaults and generate 5 randomized characters. We will save these as MHM files, which is the standard MakeHuman file format, which you will get if you just save rather than export a project in MakeHuman. The files will be named Mass, followed by an increasing number and placed in your normal save folder. Randomization and saving can take some time, and it is normal that the progress bar jumps back and forth a bit. Once the process is finished, you will get a message box telling you this. If we go to the Files section, we can see that a number of characters have been produced. As mentioned, they are given the name entered on the Mass Produce tab and have been given an increasing number. Browsing through these, we can see that body features, gender, ethnicity, clothes and skin material have been varied. Now let's take a look at some of the settings. In the macro panel, you can find settings for varying macro details such as age, weight, height, muscularity, gender and ethnicity. For each of these, you can untick the checkbox. If doing so, uh, the character will retain the setting it had before you open the mass produce tab. This may be useful if, for example, you only want to generate a set of old fat men. For the first four sliders, you can also set a maximum and a minimum value. The value picked will come from a square distribution between the maximum and minimum, meaning that it is equally likely that you get a value in the middle between the maximum and minimum, as it is that you get a value close to the maximum or minimum. The values of the sliders represent the same values as you would have when dragging, for example, the age slider on the modeling tab. Gender and ethnicity are special cases. These do not have maximum and minimum values. Instead you can choose if you only want to pick extremes, or if you want to pick values on a continuous scale. The default is that you get absolute values. That is, you get either 100% male or 100% female, never a value between these two. The same goes for absolute ethnicity. If checked, you get either African, Asian or Caucasian, never a mix between these. While sliding values might make sense for a greater variety, it will make things complicated for picking clothes and skins. If you want to match African skins to African body features, it is recommended that you keep the absolute checkbox checked. Scrolling down, we can find a box where we can find a list of target groups to vary. When a group has been checked, the randomization procedure will iterate over all sliders in the group 
and assign random values. The groups are the same as the tabs under modeling. Finally, there is a slider for max deviation from default. This slider controls how extreme body modifications will be. If you drag the slider to the left, all characters will look very standard. If you drag the slider to the far right, all characters will look cartoonishly deformed. Note that contrary to the macro slider, this is a normal distribution, meaning that it is more likely that you get a value close to the default than it is that you get a value far away from it. Here we can see the sliders at 30%, at 60% and at 100%. Apart from body shape, you can also control skin, clothes and body features. There are two parts to these settings. The first is a series of checkboxes where you can decide if you want to vary the feature at all. Again, if you deselect one of these boxes, the character will keep whatever was set on it when you opened the mass produce tab. For example, if you want all characters to have the same clothes, then simply first model the initial character with the desired clothing, and then uncheck all clothes checkboxes on the mass produce tab. Apart from varying clothes and skins, you can also decide exactly which clothes and skins are allowed. We can start with the allowed female skins table as an example. Here we can see that a middle-aged African female skin is allowed when the ethnicity is either African or mixed. As you may remember from the macro settings panel, the default is to have absolute ethnicity. That is, a character is either African, Asian or Caucasian. However, if you change this default, you get a mix between these. In those cases, the mixed column applies. In all of these tables, the defaults are based on a simple keyword search. That is, in the skins tables, skins are allowed for female if the keyword female appears in the name of the skin. In the same way, clothes for female characters are allowed if, for example, the word dress or skirt appears in the name. These are just the defaults though. You will most likely want to tweak the list of what clothes, hair and skin are applicable for use case. If you download third part assets, these will automatically appear in these lists. Before we end the video, I will just say a few words on how to get access to this plugin. As mentioned, the plan is that the plugin will be included in Alpha 3. Alpha 3 is slated for release within the next few weeks. For this reason, it is recommended that most normal users wait for this, rather than try to install the plugin manually. However, if you know what you are doing and are comfortable with downloading plugins manually, it does not take many steps to install this plugin in an existing MakeHuman installation. Note that the requirement is that you either run the latest MakeHuman from source, or that you are running at least Alpha 2. To get the plugin and the MH API dependency, visit the MakeHuman community GitHub page. You can find a link to this in the description of the video. When having downloaded and unzipped these, find the plugins directory in the MakeHuman installation. Here you will see directories starting with a number and an underscore. Copy the 1 underscore image API and the 9 underscore mass produced directories into this structure. Our write image API if it exists. When you start making them the next time, the mass produce plugin will be enabled. This concludes the demonstration. Note that what has been shown here is a pre release demonstration. Things may look different in the final release. If you have questions, please ask them on the forums. YouTube comments are not a suitable place for support requests. As always, you can find up-to-date information on the MakeHuman community website. Thank you for listening and happy modeling.